Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump, how are you going to stay on top? How are you, Mr. Trump? Good to see you again, again. Mr. Trump, just one quick question, sir. The rhetoric, regardless of who gets the nomination, looks like you're going to get it, but the rhetoric is starting to get nastier and nastier and nastier. Do you think this will affect you in the national election, sir? Well, I think that it's pretty tough stuff, but I expected it tonight. I really expected it. And uh, I mean, I really enjoyed it in a certain way, but I expected that. I've watched you guys. I've watched all of the, uh, the pundits, and they all said this is what they had to do. They're losing by double-digit numbers. And they had no choice but to come after me. And based on all of the polls on the debate, how we did, I won all of the polls. Real quickly, you mentioned something about the President Fox that said it in the news. I won't repeat the word, but directly, more directly towards the world that speaks Spanish yeah. is watching you right now. What's your opinion about us? Well, first of all, I love Hispanics. I employ thousands of Hispanics. I've employed tens of thousands over the years. They're incredible people, incredible workers. As you know, I won the poll. I won the last week. I just one with uh, in terms of the Hispanics uh, I was I think I got 46 percent which was far and away number one uh, I think that I'm going to do really well with Hispanics because I'm going to bring jobs back from China I'm going to bring jobs back from from uh, Japan and from lots of other places and we're going to do really well people are shocked that when they saw the Nevada numbers with the Hispanics they were really surprised that I won but I sort of predicted I might have even told you I sort of predicted that I was going to win and the wall We'll build the wall and people are going to come through the wall. They'll come through legally, but we'll build the wall, but people will come through the wall. And the president of Mexico saying that the U.S. Well, he just used a very foul word, and I was surprised that he would use such a word. That was disappointing to hear him. I think he's a very good man. I was very surprised to hear him use that word. Mr. Trump. Dr. Carson, uh, again, we meet again, sir. Thank you for your time. Um, rather than ask you again for the line, which honestly was the best line of the night, I mean, the, 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 the internet change. I mean, sometimes I feel that you you uh, get the, the short end of the stick because being the most reasonable and calm and, to my honest opinion, presidential really in the in the booth. But because it seems like almost like a high school, not even a high school debate, but a children's debate. But then in the global perspective, doesn't this affect the, the GOP? Well, I mean, it affects us as a nation because the reason that you have this is because the people encourage it. It's sort of like, uh, you know, in ancient Rome, in the Colosseum, and everybody would be in there, yeah, yeah, yeah! And uh, unfortunately, Rome was burning down while that was happening. And, you know, our country is rapidly deteriorating, and people are much more interested in entertainment. May I ask you this question, sir? I know this is a bit difficult, but I have to ask you. The polls have not been favorable to you. And you're not a senator, you're not a governor, you're a, a blessed neurosurgeon. My best friend is a neurosurgeon. I had uh, brain surgery, which allowed me to be a reporter. Why stay? Why spend the money? Why put yourself through this because ordeal? I, because I have millions of people asking me to do it, and they keep sending in money and saying, please don't drop out, please give us a choice. We have a live show. Good luck. Okay, let's do it. I will usually start with the, sim with the easy and then the sure. hard ones. Understand. But I noticed, and again, this was intended my second question, but uh, I noticed the difference between 30 years ago when he, Bush and Reagan debated here and the tone of uh, the immigration debate was so much different than here today, right now. I know that sometimes it's uh, primary rhetoric. I know sometimes it's politics. But uh, what changed, and most important, apart from what changed, it, would it be a high cost to pay? Right. No, no it's very simple to explain what has changed. Uh, and, and that is, uh, our president has gotten away from the rule of law. America was built upon the rule of law. That's what our Constitution provides. We're a rule of law as opposed to a rule of men. Barack Obama, the President of the United States, single-handedly uh, used his pen to rewrite the immigration laws of this country. That responsibility is delegated, delegated to the United States Congress, not the President. And so Americans are rightfully frustrated uh, about abandoning the rule of law in this country. Would, would the tone of the, and this will be my last question, with the tone that sometimes is used, because a lot of these voters, U.S. citizen voters, some of them were born in Mexico, and some of them don't have papers. And, you know, you're talking about deporting millions of parents, millions of grandparents. I'm a, I was born in Mexico, I'm a U.S. citizen now, but my daughter is born here in the United States. Do you feel that that could cause some animosity with those, those U.S. borders? Well, what, what I anticipate is uh, we will elect a president uh, who will continue 
uh, to make the United States of America uh, the best country in the history of this world, the type of country uh, that remains an inviting nation uh, to people from across the globe. Okay. All right, thank, thank you very you much. Thank you, guys. Sure, thank you.